Maybe y'all sleep in the cars. It's good to be at Fredonia tonight. Amen. Amen. That got some stirred up. It's good to be in church. Amen. Because a lot of times we've been out of church. It's good to be in church. It's good to feel the Holy Ghost that we felt this morning. We was up here a while ago, Brother Herschel, and it's, it's a little warm up here. And, and we, was, uh, we was up here just to singing and playing, and all of a sudden a cool breeze come through. And I said, my goodness, that must what it have been like on the day of Pentecost. That breeze felt so good, and it was good to feel the breeze, but it's good to feel the power of God. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here. I told, uh, I told Mom, I told Brother Herschel today we talked, and I don't know what it is about preaching at my home church. I get really nervous about preaching at my home church. And I don't know if it's because that I know everybody. I don't know if it's because, that, I don't know why, Brother Herschel. I just know that I do. But it's, I'll tell you what, uh, I want to thank Daddy for asking me. I uh, told Uncle Ronnie in a text one night while we was sick and everything, and I told him, I said, Uncle Ronnie, I said, uh, one of the nights, I said, I had a dream, and I'll get it a little bit, and I told him, I said, all I can say is when we get over, and when I get the first opportunity to preach and preach again, I feel like the Lord has laid something on my heart for the church today. And I want to preach, but I also want to thank Him for allowing us to, to have service. A lot of churches are completely not having services now. No, no outside, no inside. We traveled a couple weeks ago and went to a church over a month ago and sung. And there was churches that wasn't even having nothing. Brother Herschel, they was closed. And I'm so thankful that still some in this day at Fredonia wants to have church. I want to be honest with you, I want to have church. When I, when I called Daddy on a Wednesday, Thursday, and he had said something about you know, he said, well, I don't really know if everybody was able and if we felt strong enough and all this. I said, Daddy, we need to have church. I want to have church. I want to see my church family. I want to see them worship. I want to see them praise God. I want to hear them honk the horns. I want to hear them cut their lights on. I want to see the hands raised out the window. Brother Doug, Brother Doug, while ago when we was when they were singing, you look back here at the first of the service, and Brother Doug had his window out of his uh, the top the sunroof, praising God. I want to see that because it still shows that Brother Wallace, there's groups that are hungry for a move of God. Amen. And I'm so thankful for that. I wish Brother Delbert would have been here tonight. Uh, I didn't testify this morning about it because I knew I was preaching tonight. And I wanted to testify. It's been a trying time for our family and friends and the church family and everything. And Uncle Ronnie, uh, Friday, Amanda and I was able to go see Brother Johnny. And we was able to worship, I mean, see him and, and spend about an hour with him. And, and I come out walking out of the hospital. And we walked up to Tahoe and there was a big old puddle of radiator fluid and I said oh my goodness so luckily we had some in the back we filled it up and we made it home and I said well maybe they're not too expensive because my old truck it wasn't about a hundred bucks and I got to looking at it and brother Ben it was right at two hundred dollars and I was thinking well Lord what in the world is going on I'm on furlough this week my check's half a week that's got to survive three weeks and I'm not saying all this to get pity or nothing like that so I put some things for sale, and I was like, Lord, you'll make a way where there's not a way. And Brother Delbert, I want, to, I want him, if he's listening to this, I'll make sure Brother Ben, he gets tagged in this. Yesterday morning, I got up really early to go to the hunting land to plant. It's that time of the year that I plant the green fields and all that. And Sister Doris, about 5 o'clock in the morning, I received a text on my phone, and I didn't think nothing about it. And I got up, Uncle Ronnie, about 6.37, got my cup of coffee. And I got it all ready, made sure I had everything in the truck, and went out there and cranked my truck up and was going down the road and pulled my phone up, and I seen a text. And it said, Brother, I want to know how much the radiator is. And I said, and, and I responded back, I said, Well, Brother, what I have found is probably $185 to $220 or something like that. And 
I didn't, I didn't mess with my phone no more, Brother Herschel, for the next hour or so. I was on a tractor and had music going in in my ears. And Brother Kenny, I was sitting there and I, I was just listening and worshiping to, to, to songs. And I, I had my, I must have hit my phone. I always keep my phone on vibrate. So if you need to get in touch with me, call Amanda because I won't ever hear mine. That's what she tells everybody. But Uncle Ronnie, I must have hit the button to flip it over from vibrate. And in my earphones, Brother Ben, I got I heard a text message come over. And, and I looked at it and it said, Brother Stephen, I just feel led to give you the money for your radiator. And I said, I come back us, us being the old prideful men that we are, we said, well, Brother, I didn't, I'm not posting. I wasn't putting that on there asking for a handout. I, I, I'll i make a way. I know God always makes a way. And he said, brother, God's been so good to me yeah. that you can't take my blessing from me. Yeah. He told. This is what he told me, Sister Doris. He said, Wednesday morning I was at the house praying. And I started calling out your family. And he said, we started praying for Brother Johnny. He and his wife started praying for Brother Johnny. And he said, we started praying. He said, right then God laid on my heart. To send you a two hundred dollar bill, he said. I don't know why, but now I do. And, and Sister Darcy brought it to me today. I cried. I worshipped God because God is able. I told, I want to tell you right now, but God is still an answering prayer. Amen. So thankful for God answering prayers. We've heard Brother Bill put a, a post on Facebook today talking about what God has done for Fredonia in the last month. And my goodness, He has blessed us here. He is going to bless, keep blessing us, Brother Herschel. He's going to keep blessing us. I just wanted to share that testimony, and I'll make sure Brother Delbert un understands that. We went home today, and we sat down and was at the table, and, and we was talking, Sister Jane, about, about church service this morning, and I got to talking about how, Ansley, I'm going to tell you, bless my soul, because Ansley don't testify. Ansley don't talk much, and she got up when she got the feeling of God, and she testified on what she did. And I told Marie, and Marie said, "Hold on, I can't cry much because my oxygen." And she was trying to worship the best she could, and and, and and I told her, and I told her what Brother Delbert told me that God is still in a healing business in East Alabama. Brother Doug, I had a revisit from the Holy Ghost sitting at the kitchen table. Did all I could do to compose myself because, Brother Herschel, that's just God letting us know that He is still in control. I'm so thankful for control. God, amen. That we, even when I don't know what to do, Sister Angie, I don't know which way to go. That God is in control. Amen. I'll try to preach now. I just wanted to share some testimony on how God has blessed us. And, you know, I'm just not the only one He's blessed. He's blessed everybody that's sitting in their cars, sitting up here. God has blessed each and every one of us. I think about Aunt Esther, had her surgery that she had. And now we look at her, she shouted the house down last Sunday morning, Sunday night. She shouted and worshiped God. Why? Because God's still in control. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I just feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I feel the love of God. I like what I feel, Brother Herschel, when I feel what I feel right now. Amen. I thank God for allowing us, even on the side of the road, and for the neighbors that's listening, and the ones on Facebook, guess what? God is still of God. We don't have to work it up here because the Holy Ghost can come through the screen and go through the radio and go through the airways Amen. and let them feel the same Holy Ghost anointing power that we felt this morning, yeah. Sister Angie. Why? Because He is God. He is in control and He has the Holy Ghost that will help us. Amen. I thank God that He's still God. Amen. My goodness, I ain't nothing. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, if you don't, I understand Matthew chapter 25. I told you I was a little nervous tonight. I ain't never preached to a car, cars, and I didn't know how, if people would have their Bible or whatever. But Matthew chapter 25 is a very, very, very familiar scripture. I told Sister Doris this morning, 
when she asked me, her and Brother Herschel, Brother Herschel told me, he said, Brother Stephen, I want you to come tonight bearing both barrels, and I want you to shoot, and I want you to bless us tonight and preach the house down. And I told Brother Herschel, I said, I'm going to be honest with you, the scripture I'm going to preach on tonight, I have never preached on it. And in the last 10, 15 years I've been preaching, Brother Herschel, I've never preached on this, but it goes right along with the dream that I have, and I feel like God wants somebody to know tonight that it's going to be okay. Matthew chapter 25, I'll start in verse 1. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, the winds blowing, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Verse 2 says, And the five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. It said he took oil. The wise, they took it. They prepared, Brother Herschel. It says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, I don't know why it is in the Bible, but every every victory, every trial that's going on, every heartache that's going through, Brother Herschel, it says, and at the midnight hour, amen. You see here in verse 6, it says, and at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. You see, at midnight, that ain't saying that Jesus is going to come at midnight. Because if you read, I'll read some some commentary in a little bit. Even the wise that was prepared by the Herschel was shocked that God came at that hour. Amen. Verse 7 says, Then all of those virgin arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Verse 9 says, But the wise answered, saying, not so hey hallelujah not so I'll get there uh, Holy Ghost, Lord, but not so it said at least there be not none, not enough for us or you and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself you see the wise was also trying to help the fool hey you go out there and you make sure you get prepared you do this but the foolish being the foolish they didn't verse 9 say, uh, 10 says and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they were ready and went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Verse 11 said, Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. Brother Herschel, if God be my help tonight, I would like to preach on a simple thing. What are you cherishing? You see, the wise, Uncle Ronnie, they, they carried this oil and they cherished it. And they, Brother Herschel, it meant everything to them. And it was prepared, Brother, Brother Ben. They, they, they wanted to make sure that when the time came, that they was ready, Uncle Ronnie. So when it did come, amen, they was ready, Brother Herschel. And the foolish ones, they set off and they played and, and they watched their, their stuff. Uh, I'm sorry. They watched their... The, 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 lamp, the lamps in the midnight hour, I'm sure they burnt their oils and I'm sure they burnt everything. Uncle Ronnie, they wanted everything that they could see. They was being foolish and they spent it just to carry it. They didn't know which way they was going to go, but even in the midnight hour, when the Son of Man came, they asked for help, but it was too late. Yes, yes. Amen. So let me tell you how this all feels into my dream. The first night, the Thursday, that that I tested positive, and um, I've always, when I run fever, I've always had a, I always ate in my body, or my bones always hurt. But Sister Doris, Amanda, and I, we lay down in the bed, and, and I went to bed, I tried to sleep, and I laid there, Brother Ben, and I would toss, and I would turn, and this went on for seven hours. Sister Doris, every time that I would close my eyes, I felt like that I was on another continent over here. And it don't make sense the first night, Sister Doris. There was this red emblem, a red thing that I was trying my best. And I was going through hundreds of them. And I was trying to, to grab one certain one, Brother Herschel. It didn't make no sense. I couldn't tell what I was fighting for. I couldn't tell Kelly what I needed. I, could, I just knew there was one specific one, Brother Herschel, that I needed to get a hold to. And I'd wake up, Brother Ben, and I'd wipe the sweat. And I'd roll over and go to sleep. And I was 
was in another place and Sister Doris, I was doing the same thing. I was fighting for what was mine, a karate. I was going through a, a rubbish of all these red things that I didn't know what it was that night, Brother Doug. And I was going through and I find it and I hold it. I, I heard a little music, but I didn't quite know what it was. And I'd sit there in the midst of it and I'd wake up. Sister Doris, I'd say, God, what are you trying to show me? And I'd, I'd go back to sleep, Brother Paul, and I'd be in another place. And I'd be going through these red things. I was trying to find one certain one, Brother Herschel. I didn't know what it was on that night, but I knew whatever it was I was fighting for. That it was worth fighting for. I didn't know what it was, Daddy, but I knew whatever it was. It was something that I cherished with everything that I had. This went on, Brother Herschel, for hours. I woke up and slept about 20 minutes. I'd go back to sleep and I'd do the same thing. Every time, Brother Steve-O, I'd wake up. Every time I'd go to sleep, my apology, I'd show up somewhere else. And I'd be fighting for this thing, not having a clue what it was. Sister Doris, the next night, I laid there at all on, on that night and I woke up. And when I did finally sleep, I, I got up saying, what in the world does this mean? This don't make no sense to me. I don't understand what this was, Brother Herschel. I know that the Bible tells us, and I'm not saying that I had a vision. I'm not saying that I will prophesy the vision. But I know what I felt in my soul. And I was disturbed, Sister Dorison. I started praying some on that Friday when I felt good. And sure enough, on Friday night, I laid down. Sister Dorison, I went to sleep, and I started having the same dream. I started going through it and Sister Doris about an hour and a half, two hours into my dream I stopped and I woke up and I said my God I said give me what I am dreaming Lord in the midnight hour when I can't do nothing else explain to me what I'm fighting for I'd get up wore out daddy I'd get up tired fighting for it and all of a sudden Brother Herschel in the midst of it things started clearing up what I was holding and what I was fighting was a blood stained whole rugged cross I started bleeding the blood of Jesus Christ brother Paul I heard the song of the saint that sing page 305 and I cherish the old rugged cross brother Herschel and what I did I started I seen a karate that it was the thing that I need to cherish the most it was an humble sister Karen that's been mauled this an humble that's been laid to the side long enough for karate and what I wanted was mine, Brother Herschel. I wanted to grab that cross. I wanted to hold on that cross with everything I had. Because I needed it so much to survive. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Kelly, I started thinking. I said, Lord, I see now why the old song, the old rugged cross, seems so much. I see why the old rugged cross, but Brother Herschel, I got to pray it at night. And God started revealing to me that in the midst of the rubble, so red crosses that I was going through, I could have easily grabbed somebody else's. I could have easily grabbed a small one. I could have easily grabbed a giant one. But there was one specific one, Sister Kelly, that I had to get to that I had to hold on to even in the midst of my trial it was my cross to carry and God told me brother Paul to tell the church to cherish what's yours hallelujah hallelujah brother Luke used to tell us that when I brother Luke passed away when I was 15 and I remember when I could remember up till Brother Luke always told us that we took the words of the Bible and we inserted it in our hearts because there may come a time that they would take our Bibles. There may come a time that they may mock us. That there may come a time that they try to stop us from worshiping. What are we seeing today? We are seeing a time that they are trying to stop us from worshiping and we need to cherish the old rugged cross. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uncle Ronnie, I started praying. And I started, I started worshiping God. I said, my God, don't never let me, Brother Herschel. Lord, don't never let me clean. Don't never let me think it's not important. And I'm going to say, oh me, because so many of us has done it. We take our Bible and we put it on the shelf. And we only go to it when we need it. <laughs> Woo! We don't pray.
dirty like we used to sometimes because, well, everything's just going hunk-a-dory. We don't pray, Brother Ben. I'm sorry if you're trying to catch me, but I feel a Holy Ghost. Brother Herschel, there's times that everything looks great, Sister Doris, and we don't really, we don't carry our cross with us. We know it's there if we need it. We drag it along at a distance. But Jesus told me that even on the mountaintop, that even on the highest valley, we need to hang on to that cross. Why? Because he died on the old your cross for my sin. Amen. Do you think about it? The Son of Jesus Christ. He came down from heaven. He wasn't made to do it, Brother Brown. You know, sometimes we take our kids and we tell them, you're going to do this or else. There was an or else. Jesus willingly said, Father, I know that there needs to be a supreme sacrifice. And I willingly go down there for Stephen McClain. He died I'm making it personal tonight. I've said it time and time again. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you need to come have one. It ain't the same uh, having a relationship and it is knowing. But I'm so thankful, Brother Steve, oh, that I have a relationship. Amen. To think that he willingly gave up heaven. The best singing there ever is and the angels that sing the streets of gold, the walls of Jasper. My God to be able to walk and see God as being the light of heaven. But he gave it all, Brother Herschel. So we in the day of hour that we can cling on to the old rugged cross and hold it with every house that we could. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was thinking, my goodness. Sister Angie, I got to thinking about them five wives, how they was preparing Uncle Ronnie. But even in the day of the midnight hour, when the trumpet sounded in this parable, they were shocked as well. I got to thinking about it, Sister Kelly, in this midnight hour that we're going through right now. Even the ones that are prepared for the Herschel, even the one that hadn't gave up, and pray God in the highest. And cherish what cherish the most. Even when Jesus, Gabriel, steps out and blows the trumpet, we're going to be shot. But could you imagine? I don't want to imagine how the foolish felt. They were sent direct messages and details what to do. Take your oil and get plenty. Be prepared for the bridegroom's coming. Is there not a call that's going out to this world today? Telling them, I, you can tell, tell people I'm calling them foolish if they ain't in church. You can tell people I'm calling them foolish if they don't worship God like I am. But that's okay. They are. Because God's gave us time and time and time and time again, Sister Doris, to tell us. Make sure everything is in order. Make sure everything is just right. Make sure that everything is set in order because Jesus is coming. Amen. Brother Herschel, I sit in the house the other night. A guy come over and we were standing outside talking. And I told him, I said, I'm of the age of 41 years old. And I remember when I was 13, 14, 15 years old, Brother Herschel, I'd hear Sister Faith teach us teenagers. And she'd tell us it wasn't a fairy tale. She'd tell us and my own statement. I'll say this. This is what I said. Well, if they preached it for 2,000 years, I won't see it in my lifetime. But I'm going to tell you this, Brother Herschel. If I see the book of Revelation ever in my lifetime referring itself today, Uncle Ronnie said it time and time again. Sister Nancy Luke told me in Uncle Ronnie two years ago, we ain't waiting on nothing but Gable to step out and blow the trumpet. I want to be a wise tonight. I want to be a wise tonight. I want to watch my sister Kelly and I want to keep it close. Why? Because I don't know what we're going to face tomorrow. I don't know what Paul, what we're going to go through tomorrow. But I knew no one that hasn't failed me. I do know one, Brother Brown, that ain't never left me wondering what to do to boy. I know one that gave it all for me, and his name is Jesus. Amen. So if I can just have him with me, and I can cherish it, and I can carry it with me, hey, it may be a little heavy sometimes. It may be a little hard to carry 
it sometimes. We may get tired and weary, but what we don't need to do, we do not need to lay it down because then we will be like the foolish. We've been left behind. God, let me be a wise. Amen. Let me cherish what's mine. Let me cherish what's mine. God, you gave it for me. Amen. I'm so thankful for a loving God. It's close enough. I'm not laying it down. But that's how we do, Uncle Roddy. Everything's go great. And we lay it down. I don't forget where it's at, though. I think I could beat Brother Ben to it. I think I could beat Sister Doris to it. I think it's so close to me that, that I can feel the radiant of the blood. Hallelujah. That's so close to me that I know that it's still right here. I can feel the warm salvation how it was that it saved me. I can feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the cross. Why? Because it, it's still right beside me, Sister Kelly. Oh yeah, I've gone through trials. Oh yeah, well last month we went through some things. I've questioned Brother Herschel. I wondered why. But God has never left me and he's letting the church know to cherish what's yours. Hallelujah. A lot of people call that song, page 305, the sleeping song. If you ever notice it because you go to Baptist churches, no attention to the Baptist folks, no attention to anybody else, but they'll start singing it and it's just a routine of singing and it gets boring. Uncle Ronnie, when I start thinking of that verse, and it says on a hill so far away stood an old rugged cross the evil suffering and shame and it says and I love that old cross with the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. He slain himself for us. Amen. And that old part, I heard it. I don't know who was singing it, Brother Stebo. Brother Stebo knows he's probably one of my favorite singers. I always mess with him. I tell him, I said, man, I would pay money to come hear you sing. And I love to hear him sing. But you know what? I don't know who was singing it that night, Brother Stebo, in my dream on that Friday night. But it was the prettiest, most gorgeous, smoothest singing of karate. I can hear people worshiping God and it says so I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Hallelujah. It says kill my trophies at last I lay down. It says I will cling. I will cling. Not loosely holding. Not just barely holding by the Herschel but cling. Cling with all my might to hold on to it. It says and exchange it someday for a crown. It says on the old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. Whoa. Hallelujah. You know, Brother Herschel, was about a month and a half ago, three months. The old crazy folks was over there trying to shoot people and beating up people and raiding people. If you ain't watched the news, now I'll say this. They ain't worse. They don't worship like we do. They don't praise God like we do. And some of their thoughts and, 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 and denominations may not be the same. But Brother Herschel, there are some of the biggest revivals that is going on today. I didn't say 20 years ago. I didn't say 60 years ago. I didn't say 200 years ago. I'm talking about today. Thousands and hundreds of thousands of people gathered at Washington, D.C. Friday and Saturday. What they have? Old fashioned church. They, brought, they wanted the D.C. to know that God was still alive. Even in the middle of the pandemic. There's church services going on. If you're on YouTube, you can see in Seattle, you can see in Ch Chicago, you can see in Ohio, you can see where there's thousands of people gather around together. It don't matter what color, what ethnic group, there's black, Spanish, Chinese, but one thing they agree on, that Jesus is still king. Amen. And they're singing and they're Amen. worshiping God because they want to see this pandemic and give the devil a back eye. Yeah. Hallelujah, black eye. It says, For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark cavalry. Yeah. It says, In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, 
Brother Kenny, in my dreams, what I seen, it was a bright red and it was glowing. Uncle Roddy, it was glowing. I knew that I wanted it. The Thursday night I said I didn't know what it was But whatever it was it was important to me Because it was that blood that was showing That blood that was being slain That blood that meant so much I know the cross is an emblem of the cross But I'm talking about the one that died on the holy cross That shed his precious blood That you and I could have life everlasting Come on now Hallelujah It says to the old rugged cross I will ever Hallelujah. In my dream, there was some of the Herschel that wasn't being true. There was some that in the, this pandemic, now I've said this before to mama, we sit over there one morning. I believe we're at the point in Revelation, although they said there'll be a great falling away. And in the midst of that falling away for the Herschel, after that, there'll be a pouring out of the Holy Ghost like we've never seen before. I believe, Sister Kelly, that all them crosses that I was going through was the ones that had laid it down, the one that had fell away. But I know what I felt for the Herschel when I got a hold of my cross. I felt the Holy Ghost. That is God telling us that if we keep it close and we hold on a little bit longer, Kelly, that the Holy Ghost and God's outpouring, it's coming and coming soon. Hallelujah. It's coming soon. It says it's shame and reproach. Gladly bear. There's people that have watched this video that are laughing at us. There's people that probably watched last Sunday night when Sister Esther got to shouting over there and Mama come off the piano and got to shouting. They'll probably laugh at the little 10 and 11, 12 year old girls that cried saying, oh, they worked that up. Oh, they did this. Well, let me tell you this. I'll gladly take that reproach and I'll gladly take that shame if y'all want to call it that because I know what I feel right now for the Herschel. What I felt as a child, you don't worry about what we feel when it goes far. Feel like what little bit of hair we never said that before. Feel like what little bit of hair we got on our head, standing straight up, cause that's God letting us know that we're okay. Praise God. The reason why He can't pour it all on us is because our earthly flesh and body can't control it. For the Hershey, you know what that means? If people don't like screaming, if people don't like shouting, people don't like music, when I'm making to heaven, I'm going to take daddy's little, little, little gold nugget right here. I'm going to shout to the highest. I'm going to shout and sing to the loudest. Why? Because I made it. And if you don't like shouting, don't get on my cloud. For the first million years, I'm going to shout. You know what I'm going to do for the Hershey for the next million dollars? I'm going to get on another cloud. And I'm going to shout a little bit Because oh, I made it I made it I made it Hallelujah 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 Says that he'll call me someday To the home So far away It's not far away No brother Herschel no more It's not that far away brother Ben Facebook world It's not that far away Says Where his glory Come on. Hallelujah. For his glory. Forever. And ever. And ever. Brother Kenny, Brother Lord Haynes would throw his leg up right now. He'd say, forever. And forever. And forever. I'll share. It means I won't have to go through no more pandemics. It means I won't have to go through. I feel the Holy Ghost. It means I won't have to worry, Brother Paul, if you're going to have work for next week. It means I don't have to worry about an MIR result. It ain't I got to worry about somebody passing away. But Jesus said forever. Yeah. Praise God. Forever. 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 Maybe for the ones in the back that ain't hear me. Forever. To share, Brother Jerry. Forever. To be able to sit down. Forever. And talk to Jesus. Woo. My God, and tell us what he's done for us. How we made it. Thank God. Who 
Sister Kelly to be able to sit down and tell Jesus, Jesus, I thought I was going to go because of cancer. But God, I went to some praying folks and I've been able to testify and say everything's clean forever. Be able to brother Jerry to say the devil's rooting me out. But I got a, a cat scan across the road in the church, in the foyer of the church to tell the devil, tell Jesus, say, you know what, Jesus? The devil thought he had me. But I got proof that Jerry Payne was going to be okay. Yeah. And, the cat, and the cat scan was gone. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Sister Doris has been readmission again to be able to sit down with Jesus and tell him, Jesus, you yeah, heal me of cat. Come on. Heal me up, cancer again. One more time, you are so gracious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To hear my baby testify this morning, Brother Ben, to get up and testify and say, I did all I could do not to shut the house down. But get up there and say, We're fighting for our Savior. And she said, Granddaddy told me that he was going to walk out. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Stephen, I feel the Holy Ghost. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Brother Hirsch, I'm trembling all inside. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Brother Steve-O, but if she don't face another trial, the rapture of the church takes place tomorrow. You know what she can do? She can sit beside Jesus and say even in the midst of a pandemic, Jesus, you made a way when there seemed to be no way. How do I know it? Because I felt the Spirit. And I go, God said everything was going to be all right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, my God. Wow. This thing may turn in a little longer than what I thought. I hope not. But I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Ben, but just to think. After 43 years. 44 years. Of living on this life. Not knowing what God was. Wanting everybody to hate him. He wanted, to, he wanted you. Just by a simple hate. Saying hey to despise him. If you ever talk to him and heard his testimony and read on Facebook, that's what he'll tell you. He was his job to make you miserable so you didn't talk to him. But Uncle Ronnie, a little over a year now, about a year and a month and a half, he found this right here. My God, let me carry this thing. He found this right here, Brother Ben. What you have found out in the last years, there's been hard times. There have been things that you've gone through. There's things that you didn't understand why. But you found something that was blood stained that meant so much to you outside of your kids and your wife that you want to do everything that you could to worship God. And just to thank Sister Karen that that day when the rap church takes place brother Ben will be able to sit with Jesus and tell Jesus hey I only made a year to live that I have with God I may only live two years when you came but God that was the best two years of my life why because he cherished it hallelujah hallelujah my God what we have sister Kelly is the greatest thing You can have millions and millions of dollars in the bank. You can have the finest of the finest cars. You can wear the finest of the finest clothes. You can go eat the finest of the finest restaurants. But this little old fashioned. Little old fashioned cross that everybody hates. Uncle Ronnie can do me nothing but good when everything else fails me. God. Hallelujah. God. What are you saying, Brother Stephen? Millions and millions of dollars, you're right. But I can go bankrupt and I can go foolish and I can spend the money on whatever I want to and have nothing. I can have the finest of the finest cars and it'll tear up on me. I can have the finest.
Father, some of the finest clothes. Sister Angie and the threads will start coming loose. They get wavered. I can get the finest of the finest food. Guess what? It'll spoil. But this old-fashioned cross, blood-stained banner will never die. Will never Oh, why? Because it had the seal of the approval from God in the that's right. The highest, oh. the highest stamp that it is. He stamped on it. It will never go dead. Never, brother Ben, will it lose the power, brother Stephen. There's so much stuff out there that can make you feel good. There's so much things out there that can take you higher than the highest high. Yeah, but what happens, Brother Herschel? Once you hit that highest, once you come off of that highest, you try your hardest to reach that highest again, and you never get it. But you know what's so great about the Holy Ghost and the flavor of God to the Herschel? You know what's so great about it, Sister Kelly? That I can get blessed this morning. I can feel the Holy Ghost. I can see people shout. I can see Sister Doris get up and run around a forerunner and worship God. But I can come back on a Sunday night of running and... All I can get a refreshing. I can get a renewal. And you know what? I feel better today than I did this morning. Which means it never runs out. It's a gift that keeps giving. Even when I buy myself and can't do nothing else. I can pray and guess what I feel? I feel the Holy Ghost virtual power come down in the midst of God. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. A gift that never stops giving. I, got, I encourage y'all, if y'all could, y'all come up here. Whoa. For the dog, it's a gift that never stops giving. Never stops giving. There's probably been times, Brother Doug, over the last year since you've been doing the mission. You didn't know where things were going to come from. And God makes a way. And it never stops giving. My God, he has to, he'll have to look at Jane and say, Jane, we need a bigger trailer. <laughs> Sister Jane, we need a bigger truck to pull a bigger trailer. We don't just have to make a way. Because God made a way. How are we going to make it way? But your brother does going to be able to sit with Jesus one day. And say, God, at the age of 15, I got saved. And I'm going to sit here with you because you was a gift that kept giving in the lowest of my hours. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for a gift that don't stop giving. Flashlights, the batteries run out. Vehicles, the gas goes out. Alternator goes out. Food spoils. But Brother Herschel, I'm talking about a gift. Never runs out. Thank God. Thank never God. stops giving. Yeah. And in, in my, my study Bible, this is what it says. And I'll try to make this quick. This is the parable of the ten virgins. This is the parable of the ten virgins. It emphasizes all believers must constantly look their own spiritual well-being. Brother Herschel, does that mean that mama can't do it for me? I mean, my daddy that's the pastor of Freedom and Community Holiness Church, he can't do it for me? That's right. That's right. It's my own walk, Brother Stebo. It says a lot of the Christ coming... In an unknown and unexpected time, which I've talked about. There's three things that this rep this parable represents. Number one, what dip differentiates the foolish from the wise is the failure of the foolish to recognize the returning of the Lord. I said this morning, we ride by these churches, Brother Herschel, that are closed. And I understand there's something to it. We've experienced it here. And I'm not calling them foolish because they're just trying to be protective. But Brother Ben, they think everything's going just right. That we're going to return in a couple of months to regular regular church services, everything else, everything's going to go. And we may. But Brother Herschel, if we don't, there are some that's still being wise. And are still having church services outside. Social distancing. Plugging up radios. And they making sure that the word's being spread. Why? Because Brother Herschel, they are preparing 
for the rapture of the church. They're concerned about not only their own well-being, Brother Herschel, but they're concerned about others that ain't ready and ain't made up their mind to serve God. It says, in time not preceded with unmistakable and specific observable signs. Number two, Christ indicates here and elsewhere that a large portion of the church will be unprepared at the time of his return. Now I've heard saints say, you want to see a house packed with people wanting to get in church, go to the church house the day after the rapture. Amen. Why? Because they wasn't prepared, but they knew. What happened to the foolish? They knew, but they wasn't prepared for it, Sister Angie. So what happened? He said it was too late. Number three, it should be noticed that all the virgins, both faithful and unfaithful, were taken by surprise at the bridegroom's coming. But the Herschel, he could come right this second. He could come in the midnight hour while we're sleeping. Hey, Brother Ben, he could come. We could be driving our truck to work in the morning. He could come. We could be gathered around the kitchen table tomorrow night. He could come. Bible says there'll be a day where one's two's in the field, one take it, one left. Guess what? There may be a husband and a wife sitting on a couch. One taken and one left. There was an old song that came out many years ago. It says, I pray that we'll all be ready. Matthew loved that song. He said one verse that there was a mama that was talking to her kids, walking in a, in, a, in a store. All of a sudden, the rapture of the church took place. Mama was gone. The children were still there. And it says, I pray that we'll all be ready. Tonight, Uncle Ronnie, I'm pleading the blood to tell somebody, what are you cherishing to tonight that is worth? I'm not preaching to the sinners. I don't believe, Brother, Her Brother Herschel. I don't think I, be but I believe, I believe that I'm preaching to some children of God that has been weary in this battle, that has been battered, has been torn, their veil's been ripped, they tired. Lord, I got on my knees again and I prayed. Hey, I would roll in this dirt. I thought about rolling and getting nasty and look at how bad and I'd have stains because I've been on my knees shirt tail may be ripped hair may be messed up but brother Herschel I feel like tonight to telling the church people that God is able to provide he has provided time and time again what is he doing tonight sister Kelly he is telling us to cling and hold on to the greatest gift that we'll ever get the greatest. The greatest. John Henry today, he was telling how much money that he got for his birthday. And for a 12 year old, 11 year old, that was a lot of money. Brother Brown, boy, he thinks he's high rolling. He feels like Brother Wallace. <laughs> Walking around that money telling everybody how much he has. Brother Wallace, I love you. <laughs> telling folks how much money he feels. He's on the highest, brother. He can go buy stuff he wants. But you know what happened over a period of time? That money gets smaller and smaller. And Sister Angie, before you know it, you'll be going through your pennies. In your pocket and saying, How in the world did I have that much? And it's gone. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> but Jesus is letting us know tonight He's got a gift that does not stop giving. Brother Herschel, I made up in my mind many years ago when I returned to the throne of God in 2006 that I never waver. I never turn around. In the last three, four months, Brother Herschel, 
Last six months, there's been a lot of times that I've questioned, Lord, what? Lord, how much longer can we suffer? How much longer do we have to go through this? But then Jesus would tell me, well, think about Job. See, what we fail to realize, sometimes we think our battle is awful, but when we look at it, there's a lot that's worse than ours. And we thank God because we see them making it out of it. And it encourages us, Brother Paul, to say, well, if they made it, I'll get up and I'll dust off my pants. I'll dust off and I'll, I'll take a comb and I'll brush what little bit of hair I got and I'll put it right back in place and I'll get me a drink of water and I'll wipe off the sweat off my head. Why? Because if they can make it, guess what? I can make it. And Sister Kelly, I have made up in my mind that I don't know what I'll face tomorrow or the next month or the next year, but Daddy, I've made up in my mind that people is going to hear about Jesus Christ. They're going to know that I serve a risen Savior. They're going to know why I get excited lose half my voice on a Sunday because he's worth praising because he's brought me so far and he's going to keep carrying me. Amen. Amen. If mama come over here, I'll try to stop. I didn't know I was going to preach this long. But I want to tell somebody tonight that old song says, so I'll cherish the old like a cross can I tell somebody tonight if you laid your cross your cross over there and looked at it have a little dust on it go over there and wipe it off well I can't get that one off that's okay that's just God let me know that I made it out of that trial I won't preach here good God Daddy preached on that to the cross one time. And every time that you go back to that cross, you look at it. That's just God reminding you that every trial you went through, you're going to make it through this one. Oh, Holy Ghost, I don't want to preach much longer. Take it off. Get the spider webs off. Pick it up. Brother Stephen, it don't quite fit. It's a little heavier. I'm a little older. Can I trade it in for another one? No, that's yours. Why is it yours? Because it's got my history on it. Yeah. Maybe you didn't hear me. It's mine because it has my history. Amen. And where God brought me from. That's right. Brother Steve, oh, I'd like to trade for yours because. Yours may look in appearance to be smaller than mine. But yours is yours. Because you can tell the devil that on this day, God brought you back to the throne of God by using just a young child. Sister Angie, yours may look little sometimes. But I can't trade mine for yours. Because you, you can look over yours over your last 68 years of living and say that's mine. Because God's brought me through them trials. Brother Herschel, yours so much, so many times. I, I think the world of Brother Herschel, he's a praying man. He makes serving God look so easy. I'm just going to be honest with you. You make serving God look so easy, but it's because it's faith in God. Yes. But at the age of 33, Brother Herschel, if I wanted to trade my cross for yours because it looks so good, I can't. Because you can remind the devil that at the age of 33 years, at Fairfax Congregational Holiness Church, that you felt something that a man was singing and worshiping God. And that is your cross. Yes. So I'm telling you tonight, as they start playing, cherish what's rightfully yours you ain't got to go to the check you ain't got to go take a loan out you ain't got to call your advisor brother Hershey you don't have to make an appointment but it's yours yeah we went through things and old crosses to Kelly has got very heavy at times My wife has 15 
years ago, Sister Doris, my wife stood in when I felt like I could. And Uncle Ronnie, y'all have heard me testify how my wife is strong. She was a lot stronger in God than I was back then, and 15 years ago, 16 years ago. But Sister Kelly, over the last month, I've seen my wife look at her cross. Hey, Kathy, pick it up, Daddy. Put it on her back. She's been tired, but she's scared her cross. Yeah, come on. My wife, sometimes, I think she's a superhero because she carries the cross for me and our three kids, and she's done so much for Marie and my father-in-law and just been my my anchor, Brother Doug. But you know why? Because her mom and dad raised her to cherish and to rely on a God and a gift that never stops giving. Well, the Johnny's favorite scripture has always been, I'll never see the righteous forsaken for the needy begging for bread. Brother Ben, I've seen my wife rely on that scripture. Yeah, I distanced myself being a man and I'd go home and Sister Kelly, all by myself, I'd cry like a little baby because I wanted to be strong for my wife and I wanted to be strong for my kids and for my family. My wife stood in there and she took blows coming from the right coming from the left but God ain't filled with Amanda and he ain't gonna start now why? because we cherish the old rookie cross so tonight I want to encourage you Daddy's already said these altars are open I know it's getting dark but you want to be a wise or a foolish tonight I'll tell you this you can pray right where you're at I'm going to bow my head and I'm going to pray as they sing dear heavenly father we come to you tonight we thank you God for reminding us tonight God that an old rugged cross is so cherished God, over 2,000 years ago that you know that the church foundation would be shaken with a pandemic that Satan himself had came up with. God, we have seen the hand of God move in so many times and healings in the last year, two years. And God, we have seen in the last couple months how you've delivered God, we see over the next couple of years, next couple of months, because God, I believe in not having faith that God, you're also going to deliver and heal and, and bring back what's rightfully so ours, God. Lord, tonight I'm telling the devil that I'm going over to his territory and I'm claiming back what is ours. Hallelujah. What the, hallelujah. The Bible tells us, Lord, and your word tells us, God, that we have a right to tell the devil that we rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And devil, tonight in Fredonia, on the side of the fellowship hall, with like mind saints, we're telling you tonight that we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus cross at the old rugged cross that God that you take your hand, devil, offer your church people. God that you heal the weary, God that you would strengthen the strength. God that you would heal, God that you would save, God that you would deliver tonight in 2020. Holy Ghost, I feel your presence tonight. I feel you working in these cars tonight. God, I've seen tears. I've seen hands. I've seen lights. God, that's just your people tonight saying thank you, Lord. Even in the midst of everything that I feel your spirit. God, I pray tonight. God, Lord, we've already claimed it. Lord, we're going to claim victory. 
or your Bible tells us to claim it in advance. God, I'm going to thank you. I'm going to thank you in advance for what you're going to do for every sick person, for every sinner person, for everyone that's weary. God, I'm going to say thank you. God, we thank you tonight. Lord, we thank you. The God, I feel like there's something in the air. God, I feel a great revival. I feel it in my spirit, God. I feel uplifting in my soul, God. Sister Nancy Luke always said to have a smile on your face. God, in the spring, in your step. God, I feel the springs beating tight back up. God, I feel the smile coming back up. God, I feel the spring, God, as my leg wants to jump up tonight. God, I feel tonight that the Holy Ghost is giving us strength, God, to let us know, God, that what you're going through, that everything's going to be okay. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. Every saint of God tonight, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. I love each and every one of you. I preach my heart out with the hearsal. But I feel weird in the day. I don't want to be like the foolish. I want to be like the wise. And I'm going to get daddy to come up here and get this. I love freedom. I love our church family. I tell you, Brother Ben, he brags on us all the time. For the dog, we have the best church family. There he is. I know there's a lot of people that's going to be watching Facebook with a Herschel to say they have the best church family. But can I tell you, Fredonia Community Hall of this church has the greatest church family. There he is. Amen. Because we love each other like it's our brother and sister. I'm going to turn it over to God. Amen. To Daniel.